Humans versus AI, who is the better code creator? Let's see what Code Rabbit has to say in their state of AI versus human code generation report. This is a report that could only happen in 2025. A few years ago, this just wouldn't have even been a thing. So this report that just came out from Code Rabbit, I think it basically supports what we all intuitively knew as humans, as bags of flesh, that AI generated code is just not as good. <laughs> objectively apparently not as good as human written code and this isn't some let's dunk on ai thing because i think that take is just as boneheaded as the ai does everything better than humans take i think there's some nuance in here and let's go through this report and see what they found through data about why ai generated code tends to be worse than what humans produce at this point in time. So if you've used AI to generate code, you probably notice a few things that I've noticed too. The code tends to be overly complex, tends to be not very efficient or performant. It tends to favor readability over effectiveness. And sometimes it just misses edge cases and business logic and things that aren't immediately clear through the code. Like for example, how you're deploying the runtime environment, maybe business specific use cases, Things that humans just know from being in meetings or from being in conversations with people or whatever. We have all this knowledge outside of the code base that we take with us into the code base. And that often gets lost when you just hand over something to an AI tool and say, here, fix this particular function or issue. And it doesn't know, oh, maybe there's a reason this is written this way because it's in a serverless environment versus a managed instance or something like that. But anyway, let's see what they found as the 10 most notable findings. I think number two should be one of the most scary ones for us. Severity escalates with AI, more critical and major issues. 1.4 to 1.7 X more critical and major findings. That's pretty scary because this leads to outages. And if you've noticed this year, it feels like we've had more outages with major services like Cloudflare, AWS. Now, I can't prove this. I mean, I don't think anybody can right now, but could it be, could it be that these teams and these companies, which are racing to use AI at scale might be falling victim to some of these issues that Code Rabbit has seen? Only time will tell. And maybe somebody within those companies will tell, but it does seem interesting and coincidental, doesn't it? And of course, look at number five of the 10 most notable findings, error handling and exception path gaps are nearly two times higher. AI generated code often created issues tightly tied to real world outages. I'm looking at you, AWS. I'm looking at you, Cloudflare, but who really knows? Maybe we will in the future. Another one that stands out to me that I've seen personally is performance regressions are rare, but disproportionately AI driven. Excessive input output operations were eight times more common in AI PRs. I've certainly noticed this. I was building out some data pipeline stuff. And the AI tool I was using at the time, I forget if it was Cursor or Claude, basically had this sequential operation that was asynchronous. And instead of batching up all these promises to execute them in parallel, it just did them sequentially. So it just spiked the latency in this job that I was creating. And it was really simple to catch, but I'm like, why would you ever do that? And it was really confusing to me, like, this should be pretty common practice, right? You would just batch and parallel execute these promises or something like that, or use whatever concurrent futures in Python or whatever's out there in Rust or whatever language you're working in. This is just common sense stuff you should be able to implement. Now, here's something I think a lot of managers are going to care about. AI co-authored PRs have more issues. So if you're a human and you're reading through these issues, so you're looking at something that an AI wrote, and now you're having to go through it, you're going to spend more time on that review. So something that was counterintuitively supposed to help you out and make you more productive or kind of allow you to rubber stamp a PR, now you're spending more time doing that review for a teammate, quote unquote, that is generally worse than your human teammates. On average, is going to perform much worse than your human teammates. So now you're spending more time correcting this AI tool, taking away from valuable work. But where and why does AI fail? They go into it here. They say the findings are highest around logic and correctness issues. So logic and correctness, it produces many more errors like misconfigurations and exception handling and no pointer errors. This is a little bit shocking to me. I didn't expect this. The next one is code quality and maintainability. I think we've all felt this. If you've used AI to generate a lot of code on your behalf, you may notice that the readability is usually decent, but the quality generally isn't great meaning that it often doesn't follow the conventions of your team or it produces just too much code. Generally creating lots of code is not a good practice because more code is more maintenance and more surface area for bugs and just more technical debt, things you have to maintain. 
whenever you can decrease the surface area, the better. So taking away lines of code is often more impactful than writing lines of code. And AI tools seem really incentivized to produce the most code that they possibly can. Now, this next one, which is concerning as well as security findings, they found that improper credential handling and insecure reference produce 1.57x more than humans. Wow. Pretty freaking nuts. And this should make us all very, not just concerned, but I think just make us take a lot more time to think, how are we using these tools? How much do we trust them? Apparently, we should trust them a lot less than humans, which is funny because I feel like a lot of people tend to trust them more than humans. We should be going the exact opposite direction. But I think this is also helpful because it does give us some clue in a direction in where to look now when we're doing pull requests and we're looking over this AI generated code, we can really hone in on some of these areas where we know we need to give it a closer look. And for God's sakes, you cannot just LGTM these AI code reviews. I think that's the big takeaway. You can't just say, hey, looks good to me, brother. See ya. That's a good way to get fired or have some sort of terrible outage incident happen like we've seen so many people have this year. Now, going further into code quality and maintainability, I think this line stands out the most. Patterns of unused or redundant code appear 1.64 times more frequently in AI authored changes this tracks with what I'm seeing and apparently what everybody else is seeing too, is that oftentimes you just get more code and this should be either abstracted into helpers or functions or just deleted. You see a function is still hanging there that you didn't intend to be there. And now you're stuck with this random function or you just didn't know that you have extra code in your code base that is not being used and just adding to clutter and noise and making it harder for humans to navigate that code base in the future. Now let's get to the security stuff where AI makes more mistakes, security vulnerabilities like improper password handling, 1.88x times more than their human counterpoints. Cross-site scripting is 2.74 times more likely to happen through AI-generated code. This is bad stuff. <laughs> this is not good at all. So we're making the internet a less secure place. So basically we can kind of extrapolate and say the more AI code that you write or that is added to the internet generally will create bugs at a higher rate than humans. And because AI can write more code more easily than humans, we can basically create bugs and vulnerabilities at a scale that is unseen before. Wow. So if you're in security, I think you're going to have a very, very long, healthy career out there. And maybe more of us should consider getting into to this field. Maybe this is where all these uh, developers and junior developers will end up having to go. Be security experts for AI generated code as it just takes over the web and more managers decide to get rid of junior developers to add AI code, which then destroys the internet, which then they can hire more juniors to catch these bugs and then try to squish them before they hatch and ruin their companies. Is that a future we want? I don't know. Now, I don't want to just dunk on AI. Let's see where it actually performs better than us bags of flesh. Spelling. Well, who would have known? Yes. You know, it almost makes up for all those cross-site scripting errors and vulnerabilities because you know what? If your code's misspelled, well, no one likes that, right? right? I mean, kind of makes up for the, all the other stuff. We can forgive AI, I think now. It's better at spelling than humans. Who would have thought? Code testability issues. So this is interesting. Testability issues appear more often in human code by a significant amount. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Writing code that is testable is an art, I suppose, like making sure you have functions that are composable or like React components that follow SRP so they're more testable. This makes a lot of sense. I don't know. It's hard for me to reconcile this, but I don't know. As a human, I'm super biased because obviously this is the one that I'm like the most skeptical of, of course, because, you know, it's the only one that shows that AI is actually beat humans. But hey, we'll take the L on this one because we took so many dubs already in this freaking survey. So what does this mean? We just get rid of all the AI tools and stop using them to author pull requests and create code on our behalf? No, I don't think that's reality. I don't think anybody's going to do that. Although it might not be the worst idea because some of these issues seem to be serious enough that we should really consider whether or not using AI tools to do PRs on our behalf automatically is worth it at this point. But if nothing else, I think it just gives us a direction for where to look when we're accepting and working with AI tools or AI quote unquote teammates. I kind of hate that idea of having a teammate that is a non-sentient being that is creating code that is brittle for us to look over. But at least I think we, if we know the limitations, we're very aware of it, we're going in eyes open, it makes it a lot easier for us to catch these things and not expect that the code that's written is better than what we would have produced. I think that's the big thing. Trust yourself, trust your judgment, 
and don't trust these tools really at all. Treat them like a very, very junior coworker, perhaps a person that might not have your best interests in mind. Maybe like a maybe like a junior contractor, right? Maybe like a junior contractor that doesn't even have access to your prod configurations or something like that. Maybe that's the mental model we need to use in our mind. Like, hey, this is a junior contractor. I really better check this because it's me on the line, not this stupid bot. And man, shout out to CodeRab because this is a really cool study. And it seems like they wouldn't be incentivized to do this kind of thing. I mean, I realize they are a code reviewing platform. So maybe this is kind of like a marketing ploy for them as well. So maybe actually this does worked in their favor by saying, hey, you know, that all that AI code you're generating really needs us, right? We really need to have code wrap because we'll review this stuff and make sure that terrible AI generated code isn't slowing down your developers. So maybe I take back what I said. I still think it's cool that they did this because they are one of these AI companies that kind of integrates into your team. Now, personally, I've used code rabbit. I really like it. And they have found bugs that I normally wouldn't have. I think on a really small team, something like code rabbit makes a ton of sense. If you have a large team and people that are reviewing code on a regular basis, then I don't know if I'd want to use another AI tool in place of a human. That's just my take on it. But I do see it as a nice to have and a must have on a team of like one or two when you're moving really fast and you might not have the bandwidth or the teammates that can actually look over your code. Anyway, hopefully you found that helpful, super interesting. And I'm sure there are people out there that are going to fight against this or find some study that says the exact opposite. But this really, I think, supports what we already know as software developers. These tools are really, really good. But when they're bad, they are really, really bad. And I think we have to just accept them for what they are. They can be a tremendous help when pointed into the right direction. We need to be aware of it, eyes wide open, and be able to fix it. Anyway, hope you found that helpful. And I'll have the link to that study in the show notes. See you around.